Shildon is the home of a British rail, rail workshop, which is due to be closed down, uh, putting half the men in the area out of a job. It's the latest blow to a part of the country which has been suffering anyway from the decline in heavy industry. Nearby Consett, for example, lost 5,000 jobs when the steelworks closed three years ago. In Shildon's case, 2,000 jobs will go at the workshops and probably 5,000 more independent businesses. Well, tonight we examine the arguments for and against closure. Both carry a cost, either financial or social. British Rail's case for closure is a straightforward one. They say that Shildon's only equipped to make and repair freight wagons and that there simply isn't the demand there used to be. BR have suffered a considerable loss in freight traffic in recent years and they don't need very much new rolling stock of this kind. The bottom's also fallen out of the overseas market. More and more countries which used to buy from BR are now manufacturing their own railway wagons. And despite Shildon's achievements in improving productivity, they're losing orders to more competitive foreign manufacturers. The result is that while Shildon has the capacity to make 1,500 new wagons every year, this year there will probably only be orders for about 100. Israel say this makes no economic sense, that they must concentrate what work there is at their remaining nine workshops around the country. Opponents of closure reject those arguments. They say the workforce is proud of its record in railway engineering and no one has criticised that. This area of Durham was the birthplace of the railway engine and has been connected with the industry since the days of George Stevenson. The unions say it would be a tragedy to throw away the skills handed down from one generation to the next and break up a community in the process. The unions believe that demand for freight wagons could pick up with an economic revival. And they say that government policies don't give them a fair chance to compete for more orders. Fundamental to their fears is their belief that this government is anti-rail. The recent Serple report suggested selling off British Rail workshops completely. The unions also argue that the huge costs of keeping thousands of Shildon workers on the dole will far outweigh the savings to British Rail in closing the plant. Independent analysts estimate that it could cost the government 35 million pounds a year for about 7,000 lost jobs in the Shildon area. Well, despite the trade union campaign, which has the support of Labour's leader, Michael Foote, British Rail is set on closure. And some people in Shildon say that the best course is to start looking for new jobs now. Since last autumn, when British Rail said that closure was inevitable, the workforce has been whittled down by 700, those men who've decided to take voluntary redundancy. A future Labour government was pledged to keep the works open, but I put it to the chairman of the action committee that Mrs Thatcher's election victory would seem to have sealed Shildon's fate. Well, we were promised by the Labour Party that if they were elected, they would take the, the benefits of Shildon and BREL in total and with British Rail. But uh, as everyone knows, the result of the, and the landslide that did come about, but we're still optimistic. We fought under a Tory government last time anyway, and we can only fight and prove and we're working to what the criteria of the, of the Conservative Party is anyway, profitability, industrial relations, excellent, so we can only keep fighting on those grounds alone. What about local support? I'm thinking of Darlington, particularly where Shildon was a big local issue, and there the Labour candidate lost his seat, didn't he? Well, that was a disaster, I suppose, yeah, but uh, the fact is that um, all the candidates in the Darlington by-election when it was on pledged support for Shildon anyway, so I'm sure that we'll be having a go at Mr. Fallon in the near future anyway and ask him how far his support stands now.